You're watching Spotlight Ukraine, and my next guest is John Spencer, the military expert, chair of urban warfare studies at Modern War Institute at West Point, major of U.S. Army. So, hello, and good to see you again. Hello. Great to see you again, too. So, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg said that the Ukrainian defense of Bakhmut could be defeated in the upcoming days. But it would not necessarily be a turning point in the war. Do you agree with him? I don't agree that Bakhmut sh w might fall. I, I do agree that it will have n little impact on the actual front line, as in the, the, the territory that Russia is legally sitting on. It's not a stepping stone to uh, you know, some great push through. It would not be a turning point. It, it would be a false political victory for the Wagner prisoners and the Russian military. So my next question is very logical. Uh, the Ukrainian forces still holding on in Bakhmut. Is it the right step for Ukrainian generals for holding on for the city for the eight months? I think so. I mean, it's a tough call that any military commander has to make with political consideration since Bakhmut has become of such great value that you know, Bakhmut holds Bakhmut is the fight for Ukraine. But if the Russian military wants to continue to throw waves of human sacrifices at the brave Ukrainian defenders, then there's a saying, don't interrupt your enemy while he's making a mistake. So if this causes the Wagner organization and the Russian military to culminate in that sector of the front line, I absolutely agree with holding, but I don't have the insight of how many Ukrainian soldiers have lost their lives or what's the available resources. But it is not unlogical to hold Bakhmut. Yeah, but why is the city of Bakhmut is so important for both armies, Ukrainian and the Russian one? It, it, it is a political value. It has Just a political tactical. one. Yeah. I mean, your President Zelensky visited in December. He brought a, a, a flag from Bakhmut to the U.S. Congress, the biggest provider of aid. Prigozhin, the Wagner supporter, needs a victory for his own political aspirations to say, look, I can win when the entire Russian military can't. It's only political value. Why should we expect the Ukrainian counteroffensive? If I knew that, I'd probably be making a lot more money than I do now. <laughs> um, I think, it, I think it, it's any time Just your now. Predictions. Yeah, I think it's any time now. I think what we've seen has been the really, the great majority of the Russian spring offensive, and that was really underwhelming. So now we get to watch the Ukrainian spring offensive, and maybe they're waiting for some of the Western aid, like the Leopards that are doing the, at the end of this month to come in. Maybe not, and I don't want to know. It, you know. The biggest thing in battlefield that hasn't changed in centuries is surprise. Like the September Kharkiv offensive, Ukraine has the ability to achieve surprise on the battlefield. Russia does not. The U.S. intelligence expect that the war in Ukraine can last for, like, years, not just till the end of 2023. What is your personal expectation? My personal expectation is this war lasts for months, not years. And if the U.S. intelligence apparatus and the other U.S. organizations feel this is going on for years, they could have an influence on that by providing the aid that Ukraine has asked for since the beginning, not incrementally month at a time, weapon at a time, give Ukraine what, what it needs to end this war that is having an impact on the entire globe. Well, I see. And, and when and where can we see the next turning point in this war? Yeah, I think the next turning point is Ukraine's spring offensive, spring into summer. How much more territory and how much more culmination can they cause the Russian military to achieve, forcing Putin to make a decision to either publicly or privately do another mobilization as he's such so desperate to hold what he has? We still are in desperate needs of different weapons. So what kind of weapon can actually stop Mr. Putin? I mean, I don't think there's a single silver bullet, as we would say. I mean, of course, the attack items that the U.S. refuses to release, um, the F-16, um, other types of aircraft, more main battle tanks, more infantry fighting vehicles. I mean, the recipe for Ukraine's victory 
it has been known since President Zelensky talked about it in February and March. The exact numbers, the exact list of equipment, and the entire world needs to amp up its supplies of artillery ammunition because that is so critical to Ukraine's ability to continue offensive operations. But there's no one single piece, but the list is very known. What does the West want from Ukraine? Not to lose or to win? No, that's a great point. Um, I think the West has only supplied Ukraine what it needs not to lose, and it has yet to supply it what, what it needs to win. And by win, defend their sovereign territory as recognized by the entire international order. So it isn't about striking Ukraine or Russia or striking into Russia. This is about defending against genocide, war crimes, and crimes against humanity. And, and what is the win for the uh, uh, United States? Um, is it going to be like liberating uh, Crimea? No, I don't, I don't think so. I, I mean, all those decisions are Ukraine's to make. The win for the United States is that the Russia, as the aggressor, isn't allowed to reestablish the global international order. Because if, if the evil Putin can do this, then other dictators and totalitarian states will look and say, oh, I can take this other country right next to me and recolonize previous col you know, colonized areas, really upset everything that's been done post-World War II. So now we're talking about the dem demilitarization of Russia. No, not necessarily. It's just to stop its behavior in Ukraine. Do Putin you can end this for tomorrow. Do you believe that is there something that can stop Putin? That's a great. That's another complex question. Uh, if his military is is culminates in Ukraine, which means it can no longer hold the ground it has illegally seized, that will stop its current aggression in Ukraine. Yes. Thank you. Should we liberate Crimea this year, and before we can even liberate the Donbas region? Should Ukraine liberate? Yeah, Crimea? should we do that Absolutely. in a military yeah. way? That's a that's a tough decision on when to do it. Uh, militarily, can they do it? Yes, as long as they keep their alliances, keep the supplies coming in, uh, and keep a, a just war in execution going. Can they? Should they? Yes. When that happens, is it the last objective of for Ukraine? I'm not sure. Uh, is it is it quite wise to um, go into Crimea, uh, or should we stop at the borders of the 24th of February last year? No, absolutely not. Uh, nobody recognizes Russia's illegal annexation of Crimea. Nobody. Yeah. That is Ukrainian sovereign territory. 1991 borders should be reestablished. And. Uh, can you, can you tell me when the Russian army could be destroyed in Ukraine this year, right? And when? In Crimea? And, and, and a lot of countries around the world can influence that to be a very strong possibility. They are desperate in manpower and, and equipment. You know, there are other personnel like Iran and North Korea that are helping them that should be held accountable. But yes, Ukraine could do that by the by this year, absolutely. And my last question, if um, China could help Russia, is it going to be a turning point in this war? It would definitely be a complication on depending on what type of aid China gives. And there are strong connections between the two for many reasons. Yeah. But hopefully China makes the common sense call that um, supporting an illegal genocide war of aggression isn't in China's benefits at all. Thank you. Thank you for this great interview, and see you next time. John Spencer, the military expert, was the guest of Spotlight Ukraine. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Latest news, trends, and analytics on all about Ukraine. Like, share, and subscribe. Any questions, proposals, and comments, contact us via email.